minutes in a potential Cinderella story. So all I want to do is keep the ball rolling and get on mm -hmm. into this game. Exactly, let's jump right into it. And I want to see how Chiso is going to be able to adapt coming off that loss, coming into this match and facing down against this classic combination of Nico, that's Rakion and Dragapult. We always love to see it. It's definitely become a firm favorite of mine now and I can't wait to try out this team myself. But first of all, we've got to see how Chiso faces down against it with that Clefairy and Primarina. I think this is a great lead from him. You've got the redirection, so you don't have to worry about beat up. You don't, and, and this is something that's kind of interesting. And obviously we've had the, the privilege of being able to see Nico Davidier's uh, choices in some of the other matches. So he's been against double fairy leads before in this tournament, right? He knows what he's doing and he knows his way around it. So he's able to kind of bounce back from it. That said, I mean, Chisok's lead is uh, certainly a little more defensive, but if he can get through the next couple turns dealing with this Terrakion, uh, it could be interesting. Of course, this plays a crazy big mind game if you're the player holding on to beat up and we've seen trainers lose it and win it you really do if you've got beat up as an essential part of your strategy you really do become the gambler you have to know when to hold them know when to fold them if you choose beat up it's gotta land on your pokemon not the pokemon on your opponent's side of the field Exactly, we saw it yesterday with that Amoongus playing some mind games on the field. And this time it's Clefairy's moment, going for that follow me. So we'll be directing away any beat up if that's what Nico has opted to go for. Um, it is indeed going to be the beat up from that Dragapult. So trying to play it risky, trying to get that boost up as much as possible. But sadly, Clefairy is going to be able to take this and take it really well, despite even the little cheeky critical hits. So no boosts coming out for that Terrakion in this turn. But it's still going to be in a good position um, if He's able to get rid of this Clefairy. Max Rockfall gonna follow out as well. Gonna target down into that follow me from the Clefairy. And not enough to pick up a KO critically though. Of course, the weather will now change and there'll be a little bit um, of sand chip at the end of that. But Clefairy able to hang on and I, I didn't quite catch the HP, but I feel like at the end of the turn, Clefairy's still gonna be hanging around here. As Primarina goes for that Max Starfall, connects onto the Dragon Pot and removes it from the field. So if you're Chisok, you now know there is no worries for you about beat up. Yeah, that, that strategy is absolutely null and void. And I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Lou, the technical term, if you're the beat-up player in that instance, is you hate to see it. When Follow Me does come <laughs> out, you try and call their bluff, and you go, ah, right, yeah. well, I don't think you're going to do it because it's way too obvious. You're going to do something else. Uh, but when you land that beat-up into the... I mean, the I think the most galling thing is a number of the redirect users are fairy types, so you don't even do good damage with it. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Uh, not a great opening turn there for Nico. Doesn't get a knockout. Uh, certainly an interesting one. That said, I mean, Rillaboom's coming in. Can definitely apply pressure down with, with Grassy Glide and, and maybe being able to mix that up. Immediately switching things over from the, the Misty Terrain that Max Starfall bought. But that really gives him such a limited window on when he can Grassy Glide, right? Because he has to Grassy Glide before this Primarina lands another Max Starfall. And with a Trakian on the field, there's not much reason not to. So... Certainly going to be a tough one, I think, uh, for, for Nico to work through. Uh, but Rillaboom helps out with priority and, of course, against the Primarina. So buying a little bit of time, just trying to see what's going on, I think. Yeah, just going for a protect here on the Rillaboom as Clefairy goes for another follow me. Of course, Clefairy with the sand is going to be going down at the end of this turn if Primarina doesn't change up the weather. Terrakion going to go for that Max Knuckle. Um, doesn't worry about it being a Fairy type. I know we said you don't want to target down into not very effective moves, but with 7 HP... Terrakion doesn't mind that and critically gets the attack boost on not only itself, but also the Rillaboom that's just come into the fray. And that's something Primarina really has to be careful about. Uh, Chiso going to go for that Max Geyser with the Primarina. Quite wise here, changing up the weather. You want to be removing um, any potential um, boost there to the Terrakion and hitting it for some really, really good damage. Um, of course, breaking that Focus Sash as well. Um, so that's completely null and void. And Primarina um, sitting actually in a really strong position except for that Rillaboom. If you're Chisok, um, you're going to have to really worry about... You need to be able to bring something in that's going to apply pressure to that Rillaboom. Yeah, I, I actually find this one kind of fascinating that he's happy to leave the grassy terrain up. Um, and that's, this play actually could be a, a long kind of term thought from, from Nico. So what he's done here is um, he's made sure he gets the max knuckle boost. Yeah, he gets the... Maybe thinking the Ferrothorn was going to come in. But anyway, he gets the knockout Uncle Ferry. And importantly, he gets that boost. So this Grassy Glide uh, could be absolutely huge. Taking away the the sand from the Terrakion and its special mm -hmm. defense boost is nice, right? Don't get me wrong, it's nice. But the Grassy Terrain's still in play. 
which against these both these Pokemon, the Primarina and the Urshifu, um, certainly an interesting one. Uh, be curious to see if he can capitalize on it. The Aqua Jet blocked there, very wise, with the Max Guard, and, and this Rillaboom is about to become a big old problem, oh. as that Max Knuckle Boost and the Choice Band, uh, I don't know if it's Choice Band, it's not, this one's different, but uh, that's that's a Primarina knocked out before it gets another Max move off, so actually, even though the Trekion had a bad start, that's going to be the, oh. the Dynamax that remained on the field. Yeah, I mean, you said that Rillaboom was going to be a problem. It certainly was. And particularly if you're a Cheesog and you have uh, the Rapid Strike variant of Urshifu, that's, again, a Pokemon that does not want to be facing down against a Rillaboom. And I think you made an interesting point where you said you, that he didn't change the terrain when he had the option to and try and remove that Grassy Glide priority. And it's definitely going to be working against him now with Rillaboom being able to be guaranteed to have priority and get the boost from the Grassy terrain against the Pokemon that Cheesog's got. Yes, he's got the Ferrothorn, which... Rillaboom isn't going to worry about too much, but unless Rillab uh, unless the Ferrothorn can do something back to the Rillaboom, she's not still in a disadvantage. So, I actually think that... I, I understand why you change the weather. You want to be able to set up for something like this Urshifu to be able to do huge damage with Aqua Jet, right? That, that makes so much sense to me. But giving up the Grassy Glide is, is, a, is a tough one uh, to... Or I say giving up the Grassy Glide, giving up the terrain. To allow Grassy Glide to remain priority is certainly a tough one here, and, and that... Uh, is going to bring us to a very, very close end game. Uh, the Terrakion doesn't leave the field, just lets itself get Aqua Jet. So that's interesting. I think that is a really key answer to this uh, this Ferrothorn. But Rillaboom just looks like it's going to be able to start fighting back, uh, bringing things down to its its Focus Sash. Um, does make for an interesting end game though. As uh, yeah, this Ferrothorn setting up is is going to be quite nasty. Yeah, Ferrothorn being untouched in that particular turn does does get that defense boost up plus two. Uh, that's something that the Rillaboom is going to be a little bit concerned about. Of course, Rillaboom can pick up a KO against that Urshifu on the next turn, as long as it doesn't protect. Um, and that could be an interesting play here for Jisok. If he wants to play a little bit defensively with the Urshifu, uh, maybe try and boost up his Ferrothorn another turn. I mean, there's an Incineroar now on the field. You want to get your defense up and you want to utilize the rain as much as possible to apply pressure um, to that Incineroar and stop it from dealing as much damage to your Ferrothorn as it wants to. And what's interesting here is Something we've seen a little bit earlier on as well is that decision making from players. So the Iron Defense, of course, does help um, in large against the Incineroar, but it doesn't help against Burning Jealousy because you're only boosting your defense and Burning Jealousy is a special attack. So this could be another one of those games we saw it a little earlier, where as long as the rain runs out, which has been on the field for a little while now, um, you know, maybe you could land the Burning Jealousy. Of course, the Incineroar has access to Fake Out here, which could buy a turn. Mm -hmm. You do have to be careful. You need the rain to run out so you can, you know, deal with the Aqua Jet. But the Incineroar is going to be able to buy a lot of time against this Urshifu, I think. And uh, even though, I mean, there's limited offensive options from both sides, and Urshifu probably the most offensive, uh, going to be absolutely key here. So uh, this endgame just gets closer and closer. Incineroar doesn't fall for it, doesn't detect, or doesn't mm -hmm. land a fake out into the detect. And I think that's actually pretty big. Yeah, I like this detect though from the Urshifu. Like you said, burns out the fake out here and can apply still a lot of pressure to that Incineroar going forward. Um, you know, Urshifu, quite a nice speedy Pokemon out here on the field. Um, and that's something that if you're Gsoc, you need to be able to get rid of to preserve your Ferrothorn a little bit more. Both players down to their last two remaining Pokemon. And once again, you see that triangle of Fire, Water, Grass coming into effect. And I think it's going to come down to which player is going to be able to knock that piece of the triangle out as a threat for its other side that's going to be able to take this game one. Yeah, I mean, everything going into this Incineroar and this Incineroar uh, definitely being asked questions now on, on how much it can do. Um, I think the Aqua Jet should probably be enough to deal with it in the rain, uh, but it'd be close. It's definitely not, not the easiest one, uh, as we've seen before. So uh, a lot riding on dealing with this Incineroar right now, uh, and something that I, I think Chisok might have found the way there. Uh, that Detect was really, really big for him not getting knocked out. Uh, I think that was key, and obviously the body press set, uh, really essential. There's no way to protect the Incineroar, so yeah, it's it's going to be bought exceptionally low. Um, but Grassy Glide deals with uh, the Urshifu, uh, and now it's up to the Burning Jealousy, I think, uh, to try and get there. We'll see. Oh, he's going with Flare Blitz, so he's not caring about the Iron Defense. Yeah, going straight for the Flare Blitz here. Um, also going to take a little bit in recoil, and from the Iron Barbs as well, so... 
um, Incineroar actually putting itself Ooh. in range to eat its berry, and that can be really helpful for Incineroar, reboosting itself up thanks to its citrus berry, getting itself a little bit of HP, um, but of course taking that flavorless recoil as well. Ferrothorn, however, going to be able to go for that body press, targeting down into the Incineroar, and is able to pick up the KO. Of course, body press coming off the defense stat, not the attack stat, so being able to apply so much pressure and getting rid of that threat just as the rain goes away as well. You know, I've got rid of the Incineroar. I don't need the rain anymore. Perfect timing for Chisop. Yeah, so if, and it was a big if, if that was able to to maybe kind of stall out a turn, uh, you know, Incineroar though doesn't have access to protect in so many cases. It's not a move people are bringing on it. He just needed one more turn, right? He needed one more turn to let the rain expire. Um, then he would have been able to handle the Aqua Jet a lot better and, and maybe it would have been a bit closer, but uh, then he would have been able to land the Flare Blitz without the rain as well, and that would have been key. So this one's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a slow one. Uh, Rillaboom does only have high horsepower, which uh, isn't mm -hmm. the premium move when it comes to dealing with this Ferrothorn. And honestly, as long as this <laughs> Ferrothorn can, can weave in body presses, uh, I think it's going to be in a, a position to, to try and deal with it, um, deal with this Rillaboom. So... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a really close one here. Um, if that Incineroar had one more turn, I think it, it would have got there and the rain wasn't in play, uh, but it just wasn't to be in this instance. I fully agree. Rillaboom going for those high horsepowers, particularly with the defense boost that the Ferrothorn has got up, is just not going to be able to deal nearly enough damage. Um, and that Ferrothorn with the body price is going to be able to chip away at Rillaboom. So, I think a few of these players, I mean, you can see that Chisok's locked in, Nico's clearly taking his time, and we've seen that a few times before where Nico knows that he's in a losing endgame position and he's got to start thinking about the next game. So if you're Nico right now, you're going to have to think about how to adjust. And I think turn one in this game, going for that beat up and having it drawn away by the Clefairy, definitely put him on the back foot. So he has to be able to adjust going into game two and whether he's going to keep that beat up strategy, maybe try and play it boldly or complete switch of his leads, is going to be critical for him to stay in this competition. Ferrothorn going for the body press, and you can see so much damage coming out from here. I think the riding's on the wall here for this Rillaboom, and looks like Chisok's going to be able to take game one in a matter of turns. Yeah, it doesn't. there's no way out for this Rillaboom. That Incineroar was the win condition, and very smartly, a couple turns ago, uh, Chisok did just double target it with, with body press and, and Aqua Jet. So, this game looks to be done. I mean, Chisok's slow playing it a little bit as well, getting his time to think about the rest of the matchup. As the battle is cancelled, uh, Nico just saying, yeah, you're going to body press me at some point in the future. I've collected my thoughts about a potential game two and game three play. So let's move on and, and let's get going into game number two. Fantastic play, a lot going on there, mm -hmm. um, but a lot riding on a Rillaboom that was, was struggling a little bit, I think, to, to deal the damage. I mean, Rillaboom came in and applied a lot of pressure because there's two water types on Chisok's team. So being able to have your Rillaboom in a position to pick up some really solid KOs, and we saw it pick up that really, really strong KO against the Prima Arena, does show that it has so much potential in this matchup. But if it's unsupported by a Pokemon like the Incineroar, if it loses that key partner that it needs in that triangle, it's going to be in a really problematic situation. And I mean, I talk about the Firewater Grass Triangle, but it's actually a Grass type versus a Grass type, and it is just that Ferrothorn that can get its defense boost up. So if you're Nico, you need to avoid that going into game two. Ferrothorn was, was key. I think there was like kind of three big turning points to me. And that was, I mean, number one was the Clefairy being so disruptive. That was huge. Um, at the end, mm -hmm. we had that really kind of tough situation where we see that Rillabooms can't beat Ferrothorns. And I think that's why Ferrothorn has taken an uptick. And, and that middle of the game, kind of where, you know, Urshifu was just able to put down a lot of pressure with Aqua Jet. So moving into game two, Nico's going to have to make a bunch of changes, uh, I think, to, to avoid a number of mistakes is tried and trusted Dragapult tracking and just didn't work in the last game and uh yeah he's gonna be gonna be up against it it's facing down against Dragapult Clefairy again or Clefairy again but Dragapult uh, as the change this time and it's it's a tough one for for Nico to bounce back because this Clefairy just causes so many issues <laughs> I mean, you say that the Trachion Dragapult is tried and tested, but it is not pulling its weight in this particular matchup at the moment, particularly against that pesky little Clefairy. And if you're Nico, you're going to have to be aware of that Follow Me. It caught you out in game one. And you're one game down here in this competition. You cannot afford to lose another one. So are you going to risk it? Are you going to try and go for that beat up? Or are you maybe trying to utilize this first turn to deal out some really big damage? Um, you can always try and Dynamax up maybe your Dragapult and apply some pressure from there. Um, going for this Max Phantasm Rock Slide that we saw him do previously, but we'll have to see. First of all, it's going to be the Dynamax Dragapult out there for Chisok, which I think is a really wise choice changing up from that pre Arena. Doesn't have to worry so much about the Rillaboom, but no Dynamax from Nico's side of the field. Clefairy, of course, going for that Follow Me quite wisely in case Beat Up was in play, as Dragapult does indeed go for that Phantom Force. So, 
Dragapult hiding and maybe going to reappear later on. And most critically, avoiding the max Wormwind there as Terrakion goes for the Rock Slide. Gets decent damage on the Clefairy with a critical hit. That's certainly going to help him out later on. But I think the critical thing there was Dragapult managed to get away unscathed. That's a much better turn for Miko, right? That's a turn that he, he wants to be able to, to play through and, and kind of do things a little bit better. That said, the follow me is going to keep coming through, um, so it, it's it's just going to kind of keep distracting from any huge hits. Uh, the Phantom Force, a little underwhelming, uh, not getting a knockout, but the Clefairy's probably in range for another Rock Slide, so uh, plenty of kind of options here. This Dragapult, though, will land its Max Wormwind this turn. Yeah, connecting onto that Dragapult and easily picking up the KO and I think critically as well, lowering the attack stat off that Terrakion to the rock side. Not going to be dealing as much damage, but due to the Phantom Force going to the Clefairy, it might still be able to pick up the KO and remove that Pokemon from the field. Um, actually not, Clefairy able to hang on, so the Max Wormwood really coming in and paying off so well for G-Sock. And Nico now with that Terrakion on the field, and we've seen it time and time before, it can be amazing when it's boosted up, you know, with the Justified, that's fantastic. But even at minus one, it's really underwhelming with the damage that it can deal and I think bringing in Incineroar here is great you can apply that Intimidate um, to nothing but mainly it's that fake out um, you know Fairy doesn't worry about Intimidate clear body doesn't worry but I think the fake out and allowing your um, Teraki on the opportunity to switch out could be really good here for Nico. It's certainly uh, not the worst situation for him but I still think he's really behind the pace this Fairy has been on the, the field for two turns now hasn't been knocked out even though it's taken a bunch of attacks so it's in a good position, and, and while it's been drawing attention to itself with the Follow Me, uh, this Dynamax Dragapult over on Chisok's side of the field has just been landing Max Wormwind upon Max Wormwind and, and lowering the attack, so this Terrakion is not scary at all right now and is probably going to be doing less and less damage, probably even less after this turn. Uh, there's been no Dynamax from Nico's side of the field either, so uh, he's certainly kind of playing it smart. And yeah, I like this. Uh, getting the defense down could be interesting uh, for future reference, but yeah, this Terrakion is... Uh, in danger. It certainly is, and I like Clefairy as well going for the Helping Hand, knowing it's probably not going to survive out the turn, but Helping Hand just there to give Dragapult the best opportunity. Ooh, Clefairy actually missing the Rock Slide there. Dragapult obviously going to be taking a bit of chip, and Incineroar actually going for the Parting Shot, oh, because Clefairy no. is still going to hang around. That, that Rock Slide miss was critical for Nico. No, the Incineroar tried to, to Parting Shot the Dragapult, but it, it has the clear body, and it just doesn't doesn't operate so that's a really i think i mean there's a lot of things that go badly for nico in that turn uh yeah not that was getting the knockout <laughs> on clefairy with the rock slide is an issue to put it politely and, and not getting that reposition that you were probably looking for with the incineroar also a massive problem i think expecting uh, a potential a potential switch there um there's, that's the only explanation is you're expecting the switch and now this Clefairy Dragapult could just kind of tear through Nico's team with Helping Hand Dragon Darts uh, going absolutely uh, all the way through. I mean, look at the damage from a spread move, um, which is, is going to be a problem. Well, Burning Jealousy going to come out and finally remove that Clefairy from the field, but I think you're right here. She stops in just such a dominating position, constantly stopping Nico from being able to go for the moves that he wants to and some of that's on the, the calls that Nico's making as well just not working out for him and a little bit of bad luck with the Rock Slide miss as well but that Clefairy has actually been able to stay on that field for several turns has caused so much disruption and actually being KO'd now is a great position for him because he can bring in a Pokemon from the back and apply pressure to try and pick up a KO against that Incineroar which we know was one of the win cons for Nico in the previous game. Rillaboom though being on the field again that's a Pokemon that can apply great pressure to the Urshifu not so much the Dragapult and Dragapult's in a position where it can maybe go for that Phantom Force to disappear and protect itself in this turn. Well, what I actually like as well is uh, the Urshifu's in and playing quite aggressively in the face of a Grassy Glad Rillaboom, but you know you have your Focus Sash. You at least got that turn. I think that's kind of expert play. Uh, there's the fake out towards... Uh, not even going to work because it's not the first turn it's been on the field. And, uh, you know, the Dragon Dart's hitting here. Absolutely huge. Yes, Incineroar is going to be able to be able to eat its berry, uh, but I think this one's going to be uh, a, a tough turn for Incineroar. Oh, 100%. Particularly with these surging strikes coming out, going to connect right in. We'll take two 
um, to pick up the KO, but I think that poor Incineroar is having a really, really rough game too. The parting shot not going off because it went into the Dragapult, the fake out not working because it doesn't work on the second turn of a move. Um, so I'm not too sure what's going on with the um, Incineroar, but it's just very unfortunate here for Nico. Of course, the Rillaboom though, gonna be able to connect its high horsepower, deal some damage to that Dragapult, but with the Terrakion coming back into the fray, Something like that Urshifu is still going to be able to apply so much pressure, particularly with like the multi-use move, the Surging Strikes, it's not even um, going to be... It's just going to be able to go through Terrakion, Unseen Fist, doesn't even worry about any protects. Um, Focus Dash is already down on the Terrakion, I thought actually it might still have had it, um, and Surging Strikes would have been able to pick up the KOs, and it just looks like g is in such a phenomenal position here. Yeah, I mean, this game's really been uh, a bit of a masterclass in how Chisok's team operates. He's had some some good turns, you know, the rock slide missing on Clefairy and stuff like that. Certainly helps him out. Um, but overall, I mean, this Dragapult's been sat on the field all game. It's gone through three Dynamax turns. Uh, it's been able to try its best, uh, you know, at, at getting moves landed. It didn't miss one. Uh, but right now, I mean, uh, it looks like as well this Dragon Darts is now going to double target because of the Aqua Jet. And the Rillaboom, yeah, it's got its attack boosted by the, the helping hand. Uh, it's still going to struggle a little bit here. Dragapult does get knocked out, though. Um, but there's one more Pokemon left for uh, mm -hmm. for Chisok, and, and that is probably not going to be the, the one you want to see if you're Nico trying to keep your run alive here. Exactly, that Ferrothorn that gave him so much trouble in game one is back out in the action, and Rillaboom really doesn't have the utility to be able to pick up a KO against it. Yes, you KO'd the Dragapult, and... That's always useful, but there's an Urshifu still on the field with the Focus Sash, and I think that makes sense from his targeting, because you could try and... You couldn't even KO the Urshifu with one move there from the Rillaboom, and still had that Sash, and then Dragapult would have been able to, like you said, run rampant with those Dragon Darts, the little droopies out here on the field, because G-Song knows that he's in a position that's so close to taken. Nico here really kind of doing that last chance saloon here, gonna be using a Gigantamax. He hasn't actually used his Dynamax yet in this game, and it's something... I think worthy of noting because it's come quite late, you know, leading with the Dragapult and the Terrakion where normally he likes to Dynamax that Pokemon, um, hasn't actually opted for it and now he's in this position where I think it's too little too late for the Rillaboom. Urshifu gonna go for the close combat, does a big chunk of damage, of course gonna be reducing its defense and special defense, but it doesn't worry about that, it's got a Focus Sash, it can just do this again on the next turn. I think this is the adaptation that, that Nico wanted to get into play a little bit earlier, right, was get the, the mm. Ferrothorn in front of uh, the or the the real bit in front of the Ferrothorn and try and use those max moves to be able to push through those defenses. That said, we saw the max quake and we still see that quite honestly it's not enough to get there. So this mm -hmm. I mean at any point this Ferrothorn can just body press now and, and land that damage that it needs even with the boosted health thanks to being the Gigantamax. Uh, that's certainly not gonna be enough to, to deal with this. So it uh, looks like Chisok bouncing right back from that defeat in the winner's finals for a win in the loser's finals. Uh, there it is, Rillaboom not even afforded the opportunity to move in its Gigantamax form. And Chisok gets this one tidied up as quickly as possible. A really fantastic game from both players, but in the end, Chisok takes it 